my name is Hope and welcome back to my channel. I like musicals, they're a big part of my life and today we're going to be reviewing The Mousetrap. Now before I do that I do just want to apologise because I keep going MIA and I'm sorry but I'm very busy and I keep getting ill but I only have five more weeks left of the term and then I'm off for like a month and a half so hoping and praying that I can get stuff done in that time so I can get more content right. Also I know I don't really review plays but I went to go see it and I didn't have a video idea so this is what you're getting. But yes today we are reviewing Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap which is playing at the St. Martin's Theatre in London and I want you to comment down below what do you think of Agatha Christie plays? Are you into plays? Are you not into plays? Do you like Agatha Christie? What are your opinions? Also remember that you can follow me on my social medias which is xwilsonhex on Instagram, hopewilson42 and underscore on Twitter and hopewilson45 on TikTok. You can also follow my other YouTube Hopeblogs. It's arguably the worst YouTube channel you've ever seen but oh well. <laughs> and with all that said let's get into it. So I got rush tickets for my birthday. Yes, it was my birthday. Big whoop de -whoop. I'm 20 now. Officially not a teen anymore. Having a mental breakdown about it, but that's not what the point of this video is. And I was sat on the very front row, but in the corner. So like, this is the front row and I'm like here. And I will say it was a very good seat. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just, there was a table behind the sofa and from where I was, I didn't even know the table existed because I couldn't see it. So that was probably the only thing blocking my view, but it didn't impact my view massively because nothing really happened there. Also, I'm noticing my sunburn is very visible, so please ignore it. I will say both the cast and the set and stuff were really, really good. The set was quite basic because it's a naturalistic play. And so you can't have like big flashing lights or like big sound effects or anything because it has to be naturalistic to like real life doesn't have that kind of stuff. There were a few sound effects and a few like blackouts and stuff, but it was like nothing like out of the ordinary, if that makes sense, because that's how it's meant to be. And obviously with it being an Agatha Christie, it means it's a murder mystery. Now me and my mum both put in bets as to who we thought it was like right before the show he'd even started. My mum actually guessed it correctly, unintentionally. And I'm not gonna spoil who it is because that's not in the, because that's not in the heart of the mousetrap. But when it got to halftime and we'd actually experienced what the characters were like, we both changed our answers and we were still both wrong. So <laughs> there's that. What I love about Agatha Christie plays is how succinct and clear each character is. I will say one of the characters didn't feel that clear, but that was just because they didn't have a lot to do. Uh, and I think that was on purpose because it makes you think that it's them. But each character was very clear and you were like, this character's like this and this character's like that. And I miss seeing that in musicals because musicals do a very good job of characterizing their characters through song. But because they do so much characterization through song, it kind of makes it harder to characterize them through the words that that they're saying and it usually just gets the audience to take your word for it when they say things as opposed to having actual reasons to be saying what they're saying. That makes sense. And a lot of people don't care about that and that's fine and people can still enjoy musicals without really realising that but I think it just adds a lot more to a piece when characters are well written which is why I think Sondheim works so well because all of his characters are so clear like there is no questioning what these characters are like because you can see it doesn't matter if they're singing or they're speaking like you just know anyway back off my Sondheim rant I got on a tangent and you should never let me do that but yes the characters are very clear and also like the clear clues that you're given, like, they are there. Not just like some mysteries where like, I'll give Pretty Little Lies as an example because I always give it as an example because I've seen it all. Like, the final A comes out of nowhere. It's never mentioned. Like, if you watch just season one, episode one, you would never guess it in a million years. Like, that's just not the way it works. So having all the pieces there for you to figure it out, I think would be really interesting. And I think going to see it again would also be interesting because now you know the answer, you can pick up on all the things. For example, I picked up on a couple of things and figured out a couple of things, but none of those things tied into who the murderer was. It just tied into reasons for other characters and what their mystery was, as opposed to like who the actual murderer was. And with regards to who the actual murderer was, I picked up on a lot of things they were doing. I was very confused though. I like, it was like, I was like, that is a weird behavior. But not once did I want to consider that weird behavior to be a reason as to why they were the murderer. I was just like, this is an odd character choice, but okay. I didn't think anything more of it, but the twist, oh my God. This is how I reacted when I saw the twist. And that is no word for lie. Like I genuinely reacted like that. I was like flabbergasted, gasps from the audience. 
And I was like, wow. Because it just comes out of nowhere. But then you're like, that makes so much sense with everything that I've seen. It's a great play, I must say. I think also a little cute nuance thing that the Mousetrap do, because it's the longest running West End production. Like now it's been running since 1952. Like it's been running for a long, long time. They, if you buy a program, they stamp it with the show number that you've seen. So I saw show number 29,150 and they have, a, they just stamped it. So I don't have the program program with me because it's currently in Manchester at home but like in the opening page I might ask my mum to send me a picture of it so I can add it in here it like says the the show number and I think that's so cool and it's so cute because it just makes your experience so unique and I wish more shows did that because like I don't know I just think that's so cool I really like that it was like just a nice thing to do and it's like when you look back at that program you're not like when did I see it you're like oh I saw this production because I saw the 29,150th show and I do just want to say this because I feel like a lot of people are probably thinking about it if they are enjoying my description of it but if you're not really into plays but you've never really watched one please try it out you can get rush tickets for the West End for 25 quid and I know in like other regional places you can you can get like seats for some of them like 20 quid, 15 pounds. Like it's not just solely tied to London. Like I love plays. I love acting and seeing people act and like be characterized through just the words that they say and the experience that they're on instead of like songs and stuff. I think it's such a rewarding experience and I think it makes you look at the actors in different lights. Like I can't explain it, but like I just, I think it's just a whole new side to theatre that people that have only really watched musicals just haven't got the experience of. But I think people would really, really like it. It's basically just like watching a TV series, but on stage in a two and a half hour scene. Do you know what I mean? And so if you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd like it, try it. Because if you don't like it, then that's fine. But I think a lot of people who enjoy musicals would also enjoy plays. Maybe not every play in existence. Like I've always loved Agatha Christie and Murder Mysteries. That's always been my Kind of thing so i understand that may not be for you but there are so many plays touring and on the west end and like just in like regional theaters that i think people should go and watch just to try it because i think it shows you that you don't always need music to have an interesting story an interesting plot interesting characters like don't always need it sometimes you want it and that's fine you can always want that i will always love musicals more than plays like i'm sorry but i will <laughs> But it does not mean that you can't enjoy plays too and want to do plays and want to experience what they're like. It's not sacrilege. You're not like boycotting musicals by doing that. You're just introducing yourself to a new piece of art. Art, sorry, lost my tease there for a second. And I just think that's such a great experience. I feel like everyone should be involved in. But I think that's all I have to say. I kept, I kept ranting and I'm sorry about that. But you know, I just, I like plays and I wish more people would go and see them instead of just hosting them aside like I know so many people do but I want to say thank you so so much for watching this video you can like it if you liked it remember what is your favorite play do you like plays have you seen plays do you like Agatha Christie all of those questions feel free to answer them in the comments down below you can like this video if you like it I can't remember if I've already said that subscribe if you feel like it follow me on all my social medias which will be there and in the description below keep enjoying musicals as much as me and I will see you in the next one